Yo, VC, what's up? Bob here. I thought I would make a little video for you guys about the Craft Recording Company. That's right. Everyone's been talking about it. They've been putting out these small batch one step records. They did John Coltrane's Lush Life and they just did a pressing of Eastern Sounds. And some people are a little more enthusiastic about it than others. Some people are upset, uh, have become upset by it. And, um, you know, it's it, it's a subject that is going around right now. So, I thought I would pop in and give my two cents on the situation. Let's just start at the one steps. You know, the one step process, the way it works is, essentially, they run the tape and they make one stamper, okay? They use that stamper until they feel like the fidelity on the stamper is getting worn. Then they stop. That's it, okay? To get another stamper, they have to run the tapes again. So each time you run those tapes, you're putting wear and tear on them. Now, from a jazz enthusiast point of view, why not just make a proper set of stampers and do a full run of the record? That's, you know, that makes sense, right? Because then everybody gets the record. But to the audiophile, they want the purest, cleanest, quietest version of the record that they can get. And the way that you achieve that is by cutting steps out of the process. Now, here's the deal. When you're dealing with audiophile stuff, you're also dealing with the law of diminishing returns. What that means is, once you reach a certain level, it costs more and more money to get a small amount of results. So if you're a tourist in the land of the audiophile, right? If you're a bit of a more of a music guy, less of an audio guy, you might not be down with this. You might be like, I'd rather just have the music and it sound good and and that's it. If you let me put it to you this way. If you get if you open up a stereo file magazine, right, and you're like a hundred thousand dollar turntable, well, that's ridiculous. I can get a Techniques turntable for two hundred bucks. Well, uh, you're in the wrong place. That's it. and I understand where you're coming from, but you have to understand that there are people out there that are passionate about audio, and to those people, they're going to do whatever it takes to get the, you know the top of the line item. And there are always gonna be markets and companies who are catering to that group of people. And some of us are sticking our toes into these waters and finding like, oh my God, these uh, speaker cables are $1,000. That's that's a rip off, that's snake oil. Maybe experience and intuition, that's when those things come into play as a, a quote unquote audiophile and you have to make the determination on if this person is a grifter or if what they're saying is true, okay? Now, I've heard the one step, uh, many of them, MoFi's, uh, analog productions, craft recordings, right? And, and I know what they're all about and um, they sound fantastic and they are quite expensive, see? Yes, um, they are squarely marketed to uh, that segment of the audio demographic. So, all this said, I decided to make this video because I got these records. The Chet Baker Craft Recording, all analog, mastered by Kevin Gray, and pressed at RTI, right? And um, tip-on jackets, the whole nine, and they were about $25. And let me tell you, all my copies are stereo and uh, they are still available for now. There are many uh, record stores that still have them in stock. I'm gonna talk about them right now. So the first one here is Chet Baker plays the best of Learner and Low, right? These are show tunes, uh, but <laughs> expertly executed by Bill Evans, Pepper Adams, Herbie Mann, and Zoot Sims. 
you know, this is pretty good. Bill Evans is on here. I was like, man, I gotta get that. You know, admittedly, I have a little bit of, you know, like, um, I don't know what it is, uh, subconscious bias against Chet Baker, um, which I have recently learned to get over because when you push away all of that chatter and you just listen to the music, you realize that that's pretty much all bullshit. So, amazing playing. Bill Evans is on here. Pepper Adams, man. <sighs> Come on. Uh, Zoot Sims, lush saxophone tones, okay? And, uh, you know, decent cover. Black Riverside. This sounds really good, okay? Now, let me say this. When I got these records, they were pretty dirty. And I had to... Um, I had to clean them a couple different times. And once I got them pretty clean, oh yeah, they they sound outstanding. The covers to these are well beyond, say, a Blue Note Classic Series or a Blue Note 80. Um, as far as the packaging, it, it's kind of in between the 80 Series and the uh, Tone Poet Series. I would say it's more true to the original pressings of these records as far as the feel of them. Now, uh, the next one is Chet Baker in New York. Now, if you want a record that they're kind of doing some light shredding and straight up burning, this might be it. Uh, Philly Joe Jones is on fire on this record, actually. His drums sound fantastic. Chet is killing. Johnny Griffin uh, and Paul Chambers is on here. I mean, this is a stellar lineup. Again, on the Black Riverside. Uh, this is about as close as they get to, like, some throat grabbers is um daniel the jazz shepherd would say but yeah it's it's really good it sounds amazing pretty low noise floor excellent sounding recording i cannot recommend this enough this is really really good but if there was one that you really should buy just one you say you're, you're like oh, i'm gonna get one chet baker record something to listen to late at night or on an early sunday morning with a drink, coffee, adult beverage of sorts. You might get this record. Chet. Bill Evans is on this, right? Kenny Burrell. Oh my God. Kenny's guitar sounds amazing on this. Herbie Mann, Pepper Adams on baritone. Sounds incredible. Let me see who the drummer is real fast. I think it's the uh, drummer from the Modern Jazz Quartet here. Uh, yeah, it's Connie K, right? Connie playing rather quiet a lot of the time on this almost at a whisper at times and the and the horns are just big and beautiful lush right in your face and i really 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 love this record provocative album cover that matches the music perfectly this is a perfectly executed situation here the cover the music everything about it this pressing is incredible. It sounds exactly as it should, okay? Hats off to Kevin Gray. Wow. RTI, if they kept their records a little cleaner, <laughs> this would have been perfect. Now, here's the deal. The one steps, from my experience, been really quiet, just like right out of the package. You know, now we did clean um, Jeffrey's Lush Life before we played it. We did. We cleaned it. So, can't really say. But, I will say this. The UHQR Hendrix that we did, we did not clean. And it sounded incredibly silent. I mean, it was so silent. When the band stopped, it was impossible to know a record was spinning. So, that all, all that said, get this. Get this. Get all of these, actually. But get this. Bill Evans is on here. Any Bill Evans title... Is, is instantly collectible. You know why? Because he's a fucking genius, okay? Anyway, um, yeah. Kenny Burrell, Pepper Adam. Um, mm, Herbie Man, playing some good stuff on here. Herbie Man, yeah, he's the man. No pun intended. Uh, now let's get into the vocal. The vocal records here. Everybody knows this record. It could happen to you, Chet Baker. Got this iconic cover. Um, you know... Yeah, Chet has a very uh, particular vocal style. 
probably most, if you played this for a young person, they would say, yeah, it sounds like Michael Buble or something like that, right? Uh, it's good, it's really nice sounding, really cool record to just put on, kick back and listen to it. Now I compared this directly to this. Yeah, that's right, Chet Baker Sings, this is a tone poet. And I gotta say, this craft recording, mm, it might be a smidge better audio than the Tone Poet. Uh, I don't know if that's just because of the uh, the tapes maybe, or the original recordings might have been a little bit better. It's hard to say. You know, I mean, it is what it is, but uh, these recordings have something about them that's a little bit kind of uh, a different vibe than, than this, you know? There's a little bit more of a darkness in the craft stuff that I kind of, I kind of dig. So, Riverside, you know, that all this said, all this said. Here's the deal, right? When we made the Jeffrey Lee Puckett video, the Lush Life, here I am on there complaining like. What Kraft Recording needs to do is make an all analog run of these records, tip on, <laughs> you know, quality pressings available for everybody. And what I didn't realize at the time, like a doofus, is that they were. They're right here, Chet Baker. And I don't know what Kraft plans to do. They may be thinking, well, Coltrane is next, or, you know, Miles Prestige is next. We also don't know the condition of these master tapes. So they may be limited to what they can do. But the reality of it is, is they are doing some of this stuff, and these are in the tw mid $20 range. If they continue down this Kraft recording, listen to me, continue down this path. This is what everyone wants you to do. Yes, the audio files, the flippers, the, and all these people, they might be totally fine with getting in a queue and waiting to get their super limited copy of a uh, rarefied vinyl, but um, these are fantastic. It can, look, they come with the same MoFi style craft inner sleeve. These jackets are super heavy. The pressings are beautiful. I'm I'm a big fan of these and uh, I just hope that Kraft keeps going and they um, basically do all the prestige, all the Riverside. If they did four Bill Evans records like that, that would, and never did anything else, that would be enough because the uh, original pressings of Bill Evans um, you know, I mean, some of those sell for four or $500, maybe more, you know, depending on if they're clean. That's the beauty of these things is they are, quote unquote, in mint condition, you know? And when you pop it on the turntable, it's as quiet as it's gonna be. Get this, chat. Anyway, I would also like to thank everyone who came to the online listening party and listened to the Condors in the System's new record. It's still up, obviously, and please check it out. Um, we're very proud of it. We worked really hard on it. I worked really hard on the video, and, um, you know, it was really exciting for us, and, you know, we were really happy to see that people showed up to listen to it, and it was cool. So, thanks for that. Also, please like, subscribe, tell a friend, leave some comments down below. Until we meet again, guys and gals, bomb out.